So we are ready to celebrate this new year, and this new year begins today. And uh, I think that's pretty exciting. Earlier the, in Scripture, the month is known as Aviv, but now it is called Nisan. And so this is a day where you can say to people, Happy New Year. Now, imagine if you said something like Happy New Year to somebody out there. You met them on the street or you see them in a store or wherever you see them and you say Happy New Year. In fact, our neighborhood knocking people, you could go to the doors and say Happy New Year. We've come to you on God's New Year. It says in the Bible, in Exodus 12, 1 and 2, Now Adonai spoke to Moses and Aaron and in the land of Egypt, saying, This month will mark the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year for you. And as I always ask people who say, Oh, it's so hard to interpret Scripture, I say, Well, how would you interpret that? It's the first month of the year. That sounds pretty easy to me. Um, but God loves repetition. And in Leviticus 23, 5, it says, and we know Leviticus 23, and we'll be knowing a lot more about it in the coming weeks. But during the first month, on the 14th day of the month, in the evening is Adonai's Passover. So I think that God's calendar is really clear. Why was this month chosen by God? I'm not really sure, but if I were to guess, I would say in Exodus 13, 3 and 4, Moses said to the people, Remember this day on which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by a strong hand Adonai brought you out from this place. No chametz, which is no leaven, may be eaten. This day in the month of Aviv, you are going out. Or in Deuteronomy 16, 1, where it says, Observe the month of Aviv. Maybe we're not following his instructions well. We're supposed to celebrate the entire month. I know my wife back home, and as she's watching this, she's saying yes. She loves to celebrate. By the way... Um, you know, it's difficult for my wife to come to services, but she is going to be at the Passover. For, so for those of you who haven't, haven't met her yet, some of you newbies, um, she will be there. And, um, you know, I've done the, the, the casing out. There are no steps. There's a, a, a wonderful bathroom with lots of room and, you know, all the things she needs. And so uh, she will be there. So at any rate, uh, Deuteronomy 16 says, observe the month of Aviv and keep the Passover. So, uh, and then it says, because God brought you out from Egypt by night. God's telling us to remember this day and this month because he delivered us out of Egypt. We were in bondage and now we are free. This is Israel's testimony. And actually, this should be everybody's testimony. Before we knew the Lord, we were in bondage. And now he has made us free, and who he has made free is free indeed. So let us walk in that freedom. Let's not walk around the desert for 40 years and say, Oh, I'm looking for God when God is with us. And God was with them, and they just didn't realize it even though they saw those miracles. So this new year is different from the other two years we know. There's the other two new years. Uh, the one is Rosh Hashanah, which means head of the year. But that is not the biblical name, because that's the name that the rabbis gave it when they changed God's calendar to, to um, around in the September area, um, and that is supposed to be called Yom Teruah, the day of the blowing. 
And so, but the, the rabbis thought that there were these three holy days in this, first, in this month, so they made it the first month for that reason. Now, our culture celebrates December 31st, and that's when we start our new calendar in, in our culture. But our God's calendar, this is the new year. He proclaimed it to the people of Israel. And so we are going to celebrate it today. It's a tribute to God to celebrate and to keep his legacy of what he said in his word, that we are examples of his word. One reason we celebrate is that God does things for us so that they would be a sign. And I'd like to talk about a sign today. You know, a sign is generally something that quickly gives us information. And the, you know, I said this last night, the first business I could think of with a sign, forgive me, was Target. Because... It just, the name and the picture just look so, you know, it's branded so well that it's just obvious. And God is obvious too. You know, it's like a highway road sign where 10 miles more to Tampa, you know exactly what that means in terms of time and distance and, and so on. We are on a journey. And God has these signs to help us on our journey so that we know where to go and how long possibly it's going to take. He gives us signs all throughout Scripture. He starts with separating day from night in Genesis. That was a sign. He gave us the rainbow. That was a sign. By the way, my wife would also like to say, we're taking that rainbow back. Uh, <laughs> You know, that's one of her things. Uh, and uh, we also have the sign of the covenant, which is circumcision. And so there are constantly signs. You know, when Moses was in front of the burning bush, we see in Exodus 3.12, you know, and he was telling God, hey, God, I'm not right for this job. Pick somebody else. And, and so it says, so he said... I will surely be with you, talking to Moses, so that will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. So God was giving Moses a sign to help him do the impossible, because all things are possible with the Lord. When talking about Pharaoh... God encouraged Moses later with the following Exodus 4.8. He said, if they do not believe you or listen to the voice of the first sign, they will believe the message of the latter sign. And we know that what he's talking about there are the plagues. And so each plague was a sign, a sign to the Egyptians, a sign to the Israelites. It was a sign to Moses. And before the plague of the locusts, this is what God said to Moses in Exodus 10, 1 and 2. Then Adonai said to Moses, go to Pharaoh because I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants so that I might show these my signs in their midst. And so you may tell your son and your grandchildren what I have done in Egypt as well as my signs that I did among them so you may know that I am Adonai. There are a number of things here that I want you to realize. First of all, the sign is to tell other people. And so when our people go out today in neighborhood knocking, they're going to be a sign. They're going to talk about the signs of God in a sense because that's what it's all about. And that's how people will know the Lord. And secondly, our children. They need to see those signs, not only in our mouth, but in our actions. 
We have to be signs for the Lord. We have to explain to them why we are celebrating year after year this Passover. Not only out of obedience, but out of love and understanding that this is God's sign for us. That we, this is part of being chosen by the Lord to represent him. And in Exodus 13, 8 through 10, well, I'm sorry, Exodus 12, 13, God says the blood on the doorposts will be a sign for God to pass over the house of the Israelites. And in Exodus 13, 8, 10, you're to tell your son on that day, it is because of what Adonai did for me, I came out of Egypt, so it will be like a sign on your hand and a reminder between your eyes so that the Torah of Adonai may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, Adonai has brought you out of Egypt. You are to keep this ordinance as a moed, as an appointment time. An appointment time, that's what moed is. From year to year, we've got to tell our children, God gave us a sign, brought us out of Egypt, out of bondage, we're free. God's word should be on our mouths. We should be a sign carrier. You should be carrying his word and you should be able to quickly give information. And then people will decide whether they want to talk more to you. When I was coming home from Dallas on Monday, I was there for just the day. I, I had an, uh, a young Islamic uh, Uber driver taking me to the airport. We had a blast. It was great. He was actually quite well read. And so we, I left him with a lot of questions to ask himself. Because I offered him a sign. I talked about how Messianic Judaism is a sign as you look at, you know, uh, Romans... Um, Romans 11 and, and going to Luke 21, 24 to see the signs that God has placed in his scripture so that we would know his truth. Another sign is you're here today. That's a sign. Exodus 31, 13, we read it. Speak now to B'nai Yisrael, saying, Surely you must keep my Shabbatot, which is plural for Shabbat, so my Sabbaths, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. So you may know that I am Adonai who sanctifies you. Not only does God sanctify the Shabbat, the Sabbath, to keep it holy, but he sanctifies us and makes us holy. And that's a sign for our kids, it's a sign for our neighbors, it's a sign for everybody we meet. We are the sign. We are in Exodus 31 17, it is a sign between me and B'nai Yisrael forever. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he ceased from work and rested. The Shabbat is a sign, that's why we're here today. To let the world know that we have a testimony of who God is. We're on a journey. The result of receiving signs on our way is that we remember them and then we speak of them. So God actually did this for the older people because some of us are beginning to forget a little. So he figured if he keeps repeating himself, we'll remember and it works. It's an amazing thing. Haven't missed the Passover yet. <laughs> God's signs are a demonstration of his faithfulness and who he is. We are to be a sign character, uh, 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 carrier. So we celebrate this new year to give God glory, and we're celebrating it, and we're saying on his day that this is a sign 
that he has given us. Today is also Rosh Chodesh. Well, it has to be Rosh Chodesh. If it's the first of the year, then Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh is the first of each month. And so today is Rosh Chodesh. And that means head of the month. It is celebrated on the new moon on the Hebrew lunar calendar. And the word of God tells us so many things about Rosh Chodesh. Oftentimes when you read about it, you will read about it and the Shabbat in the same verse. So as an example, in Numbers 10.10, 10, also at your days of rejoicing, feasts, and new moons, which is Rosh Chodesh, you are to blow on the trumpets over your burnt offerings and your fellowship offerings. They will then be a reminder for you before Adonai your God, I am Adonai your God. How many times have I read that already in the scriptures that we have looked at today? I am Adonai, your God. God wants, he knows how difficult it is in every culture, not just our culture, but in every culture, it is difficult to profess the name of the Lord. It is difficult to say, I'm a believer, and with the government coming against us and, and people coming against us, it's going to become more difficult and more difficult, and yet we see see in scripture here, I am the Lord as a reminder to say, don't stray, don't go any other way. We are to be a sign that God is God. The Lord has given us times of renewal with him. So we have the weekly Shabbat. We have the Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Kodesh, which is monthly. And then we have the designated times, which are called Moedim, which are those appointments with God in Leviticus 23. So we enter this new year where we soon will be observing. In 14 days, we observe Passover. And right the day after that, we're going to count the Omer. You say, well, where are the counting the Omer books? <sighs> Look, I'm on the 30th day. I'm praying that you will have it in your hand next week. So, um, and, and it's kind of exciting. It was interesting. I had this discussion with Jillian last night, and she was kind of quizzing me on, you know, what the Lord was showing me for the new year, which I really feel is salvations. I, I feel this is going to be a year for salvations. And, and, and she said, well, uh, you know, how are the people going to be prepared for these people who are going to come to the Lord. I mean, they're, you know, they have to show love and embrace everybody and so on. And I said, yeah, yeah. And, and I said, well, uh, and she said, well, what are you doing your counting the Omer on? I said, oh, I'm doing it on the first 12 chapters of Matthew. She said, well, that's, that's your instruction on how to greet people from the Beatitudes and, and so on. And I said, wow, Lord, that, that's really neat. Um, because I believe there are going to be salvations. This is what I feel God has said for this year that we, and, and so it so, makes so much sense that some of you will be going out from door to door today to start this year off with, with, with going and sharing our faith and speaking about the Lord. So after, uh, we also have Yom HaBikurim, which we actually, that's called the Day of the First Fruits, which we actually celebrate at our Passover Seder. It's the end of our Seder. It's referring to the fact that Yeshua has risen as the first, first fruit. And, and then we follow. And, and so we see uh, this being played out in our Seder towards the end. And, and we have put that in. And then finally, uh, weeks later, seven weeks later, we have Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. Uh, the church knows this as Pentecost. But for some reason, this holiday of Pentecost in the church seems to be not being celebrated anymore, hardly, from what I can see. Uh, and I think that's a shame. So we're just going to have to encourage the church to, to join us on Shavuot. 
and, and just celebrate the fact that God gave us his word and God gave us his spirit. And, and so that's got to be exciting. So these are the signs that God has set up for us to observe and for the rest of the world. I, I remember yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. Yesterday, going to PDQ and, and the gal who takes my order, we were, uh, we were talking about this weekend, and, and I said, yeah, you know, it's the new year. And she said, what? And I said, it's the new year. That's what it says in, in Leviticus and Exodus. And, you know, and then we had a discussion about the Lord. It was a quick discussion. I mean, you know, it's quick, but it was one of those drive-through discussions. <laughs> Each of these observances gives us the opportunity to invite others to take part in our journey so that they can see the sign that we are, that God has made us, and then they understand more of who God is. Signs are only effective when people can see them. So we have to share with them to be who we're supposed to be. Have you signed up for Passover yet? Have you invited others yet? Please do that this weekend. Please, when you get your Counting the Omer booklet, and for those of you who don't know about it, uh, you'll find it in Leviticus 23, I don't know, is it 15? I think it's 15. But at any rate, it tells us to count the Omer for 50 days, and so I, for the past few years, have developed a new devotional each of those uh, 50 days that you will get, and with the prayers on remembering to count the Omer, and, and so I pray that it will bless you. But I also pray that you'll share it with other people. We have a pastor from, where is he? From Was he a pastor? I can't remember. The guy who wants 20 of, he's been a pastor who from, I don't know, I think he's in Ohio or Indiana somewhere, who's asking for a number of our counting the Omers. So what I'm saying is, it's not about us. It's about understanding the times and the seasons through the signs that God gives us and that we are to explain these signs to others so that they can partake. And so give them Accounting the Omer book. And make sure that we're going to be together for Shavuot. I have somebody in the congregation who wants to do something that is a tradition. I'm not always in favor of traditions. But this tradition, I think we'll try this year, somewhat. I don't know yet. I, it depends how much you encourage me. And the tradition, well, well, you know, haven't heard the tradition yet. Oh, but I'll call on you, Christine. I mean, you know, I'm just, you know. And the tradition is that on Shavuot, the evening to the day, you stay up all night and you and you read scripture. So we would read scripture, we would pray, we would worship, and then what I've done in the past when we've done it, we haven't done it often, and, but I have promised to cook breakfast. <laughs> for those who stay, not for those who come for breakfast. No, you have to be there. You have to do the time, and then I'll fix you a beautiful breakfast. Okay. So, um, and then we have a service that day, too, Sunday. So, <laughs> it's, but you know what? Um, I know some people get tired, especially the younger generation. Not really sure what that's all about. But there's no reason to be tired because this is all about getting refreshed. So you don't sleep for a little while. It's okay. 
I think. So today's a new year, and, and when you say new year, you, oftentimes you think of doing something over or, or starting over again because, you know, you realize you didn't do what you wanted to do last year, and you want to do it right this year. So I'm hoping that's how you feel about the Lord. And so today you can make a promise, a pledge, not an oath, a promise to the Lord saying, Lord, I am promise to be more involved in your signs and in, in, in what you've given us to do. And uh, so I'm, I, I pray that that's something that you will do on your own. Let me just mention there are a lot of signs all throughout Scripture. A lot of them are prophetic signs. Uh, and so let's look at one prophetic sign, though there are hundreds of them, when we talk about recognizing Yeshua. Isaiah 7.14, Therefore Adonai himself will give you a... Behold, the virgin will conceive... When she is giving birth to a son, she will call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. Many people have ignored the signs in Scripture. Our own Jewish people, for the most part, have ignored the signs in Scripture that he would come twice. Though in the writings, believe it or not, there is a lot spoken of of two messiahs. The one... Ben uh, Yosef and Ben David. And one is the suffering servant because they understand Isaiah 53. And the other is, is, is uh, Ben David, the, the, the uh, conquering hero Messiah. And so you wonder why our people just have not seen it. But we ask you, Lord, right, right now, that this would be the year that they would, their eyes would open. Yeah. This would be that year. I pray this in the name of Yeshua. You know, you might be here today and you've already accepted Yeshua as your Messiah, but there might be some who haven't. But I'll tell you, there might be some on Facebook Live who haven't. And you're... At home, listening, watching. And I would ask you to look at the signs. The signs that Yeshua is the Messiah. And that he will come again. There are signs all throughout our scriptures. And if you want to journey with the Lord, you have to receive Yeshua as your Messiah. So if you're willing, I would have you say the following. I am not willing to ignore God's signs. I am willing to accept Yeshua in my life as my Lord and the atonement for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. I receive Yeshua into my heart and I dedicate my life to you, Lord. Something like that. If you've said that, we have special Bibles for people who have received the Lord today. They will help navigate the Scriptures for you if you're not familiar with them. So, if you're online, email us. Call our office. Ask for the Bible for new believers so that you will understand the signs and you will see the journey that's before you, which is abundance. Father, I pray in the name of Yeshua, pour out your spirit. And send the kind of revival, Lord, that brings people to know you, Lord. I pray in the name of Yeshua that there would be a move of your spirit upon the people, our, our relatives, our, our family, 
who don't know you yet. Lord, open their hearts, open their eyes, open their minds to who you are. I pray, Lord, for people we meet randomly or our neighbors, that their eyes will be open, that they will even say, what must I do to accept you? Lord, you know three weeks ago we had a woman who said that to me. What, what do I need to do? So Lord, I believe that you can work on people's hearts in such a way that they will ask that question. And maybe some won't and we'll have to just speak to them anyway. Lord, give us boldness. Give us boldness, Lord. Give them a, a, an ear to listen. And let us understand that you have made us to be signs. Signs so people recognize you. Help us to make our signs good. <laughs> the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart would be acceptable to you, Lord. Help us to act in such a way that people would see us be different and they would see that we are a sign for the living God. Lord, I thank you for choosing us. This life is amazing because you are in it. So I want to thank you praise you and bless your name in the name of Yeshua. Amen.